Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, real estate agents told to make FMPF contributions. Staff must be paid on time, warns health minister. And man pleads not guilty to rape and abduction charges. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. Real estate companies have been directed to pay 10% FMPF contribution of all their staff and agents effective immediately. However, this has not been received well as the Real Estate Association claims many agents will face financial difficulties, especially if they have to backdate the payments to 2011. Catherine Krishna reports legislation was passed in 2011, which required all real estate companies to pay the FMPF contribution for their staff. The Real Estate Association claims their agents are being paid hefty commissions and making FNPF contribution will be an added cost. They are paid around 50% of our commission. Now on top of that, we have received a circular from uh, the Real Estate Board that they are, the FNPF is asking us to pay 10% contribution. Vyas Deo Sharma claims the Real Estate Act 2006, which was passed in 2011, was done without any consultation with the real estate companies, and they only found out about it last week when the SECLA came out. So this is going to be a big burden on the real estate, which means that when we have earned one dollar, at the end we will be left with around uh, 29 cents. Meanwhile, Fiji National Provident General Manager Member Services Alipatea Wangai Rawai says FNPF contribution depends on the contract type. The deductions of, uh, of contribution is dependent upon the type of contract that one. There's one that's called a contract of service and a contract for service. The Real Estate Association has requested for a meeting with FNPF to seek clarification on the circular. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office will lodge a complaint against trade unionist Felix Anthony to the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. The complaint is based on the revelations made by former PDP leader Linda Tambuya during a press conference in Suva on Tuesday. FBC News understands Tambuya revealed more about PDP's December meeting and former leader Felix Anthony's continued involvement in the management of the party. Anthony's involvement includes being present in the meeting when the essential decision to sign the MOU with Sadalpa was made. Registrar of Political Parties Mohamed Sanim says the press conference by Tambuya revealed more than what he found from the minutes of the meeting that was submitted to him. Sanim did not comment further on the matter. After receiving numerous complaints of late payment, Health Minister Rosie Akbar has directed senior officials and managers to ensure that all staff are paid their salary in a timely manner. The minister says all workers need to be treated fairly. Ali Kimbia reports. Speaking at the senior managers meeting this morning, Minister Rosie Akbar says she will not tolerate any delays in payment of wages and allowances. I can't have staff calling me and saying I haven't been paid my uh, merit time allowance, I haven't been paid my overtime allowance and all those allowances that they rightfully deserve to be paid. So cost center managers, please ensure that these things are, uh, they don't become a common issue for us and, and all our staff are treated well and fairly when it comes to paying them for the services that they are rendering, our drivers, our, our cleaners, our, the various level, the cadre of people that work for us. She says senior staff must ensure that workers' welfare is paramount. The government policy is every civil servant must be paid overtime. However, we had some senior managers who decided to do things on their own. Now, through this forum, please let, let me allow you. We all need to be on the same page. We all need to be on the same platform. We all need to follow the same policies. We cannot deviate and make our own policies. That creates a lot of problems for us at headquarters. Assistant Minister Alex O'Connor agreed with the Minister's sentiments. 
Well, uh, that, that is correct. I mean, uh, every, every, every man has, has got to be paid for, uh, for his labor, and uh, I, I, I see that um, that, uh, that, that was uh, the, in the right direction. The ministry's senior officials have gathered in Suba for a two-day meeting to find solutions on areas of concern and also make plans for the year ahead. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A 17-year-old Nasinu girl allegedly abducted and raped over a three-day period in January 2014 wept in the High Court during cross-examination today. She recalled how she was on her way home with a friend at around 11 p.m. on a Friday night when a taxi stopped by them. Pranita Prakash has more. The victim was 13 at the time and said a taxi driver with a knife threatened her. She also said he made her sit in front while her friend sat in back seat. She told the court the driver did not stop the taxi until they reached Lotoka. Meanwhile, in cross-examination, the defense suggested she had paid the taxi driver $40 to take them to Wainandui, and upon reaching there, she called a friend who never answered, and that they then returned to Suva, where she paid the taxi driver $110 to take them to Nandi. The victim denied this and started weeping in the court. She maintained in court that they did not stop anywhere until they reached Lotoka. The accused Umendra Kumar is charged with three counts of rape and one count of abduction. He repeated his not guilty plea to amended charges in the Suva High Court today. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The National Federation Party has called on the government not to mix religion with politics while responding to the Prime Minister's speech delivered during a Talanor session at a temple in Nakasi. Warenge Mbaini Marama had said opposition politicians, political parties and their supporters are keeping quiet when people speak in divisive ways. Akusi Tale reports. They should be openly condemning such behavior. However, as we know, they like to divide people because they see their political fortunes in a divided Fiji. National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad has labeled his speech as a despicable and shameful act. It is a blatant lie that opposition parties have not condemned desecration of temples. In fact, we condemn any form of desecration of any uh, uh, place of uh, religious worship. Uh, we've done so uh, through the media many times. Uh, we've called for a full-scale uh, police investigation, and we've called for harsher penalties for those found guilty of such acts. Prasad says he personally visited several temples that were desecrated, however did not publicize it. He says the government should instead focus on how to reduce this act of desecration. It was a classic case of how government is using places of worship to preach politics. And, and, and on top of that, shamelessly accusing opposition political parties. The uh, NFP leader praised Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Giliho for highlighting the work they were doing to arrest the perpetrators responsible for these acts. Akusi Tatali, FBC News. Still to come, female naval officers first for Fiji and changes to FNPF withdrawal policies effective. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Maisinatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a Nalini Shin, Chikuminasom Vutipola, Ndotali Taka on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. We have a Guyazo Silil Tale, Nagura Rama in our money, Nandonga, we do Teletaki and the Dubinus Valley from the Mudurongo, Barong in the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. The Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti in the Wonga and the VNN. A total of 18,153 crimes were recorded last year. The police force says this is a decrease of 9% when compared to 19,998 cases that were recorded in 2016. Anna Ravulo reports. Workforce. The decrease in overall crimes did not come easy for police. Uh, there has been um, good investment by, uh, great investment by government in terms of mobility. We not only worked on our land mobility capabilities uh, that has been uh, greatly enhanced, uh, we, are, we also managed to get our sea mobility uh, going and government provided a budget for that. Police also revealed that cases of abuse of women and children have decreased. For crime against women, ladies and gentlemen, 
out of 2,867 cases that was registered, 2,684 were actually committed in 2017. Gilio says 2017 was definitely a much safer year and have told his officers to be on their toes as Fijians demand a lot of them. I can categorically state that, the 27, that 2017 was a much safer year for Fiji when compared to 2016. The 2017 crime statistics takes into account actual crimes committed during the reporting period from 1st of uh, January to the 31st of December. Police are expected to up their game in other areas to further reduce the crime rates. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. For the first time in history, the Fiji Navy is recruiting female officers. Navy Commander Captain Humphrey Tawake says the decision was made to promote gender equality in the workforce and they want to provide equal opportunities. Kelly Vadala reports. A total of 3,000 applications were received by the Fiji Navy during their recruitment drive last month. Of these, 1,200 applicants were women. We have shortlisted about 400. That's 150 uh females and 250 males. They're going through the interviews now, a verification of their academic transcripts, uh, aptitude tests, uh, physical tests to see the, 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 the physical condition, plus the swimming test. It's, as I mentioned, it is not a pass or fail, yeah. but just to give us an gauge and indication of, of where they are in terms of their physical condition. Captain Humphrey Tawaki says the interest shown by women to join the Navy has been encouraging. We received applicants from Lombasa, from Lao, from Esauas, even from as far as uh, Madhuata. We concentrated on, on those that were between 18 and 25, uh, that, that are qualified and have met the threshold. Women who were shortlisted says being part of a male-dominant environment will be a challenge, but they look forward to the journey ahead. The training is a bit tough, but I am sure I can handle it. Being part of the Navy will actually motivate other women that nothing is impossible. This is the first recruit for females, and uh, yes, this is history for Fiji. I want to be part of this because it will teach me how to be more disciplined in my life, and also it's an opportunity to show women power. The Fiji Navy is looking at acquiring a vessel that will accommodate its female officers. Kelly Badala, FBC News. The major changes to the withdrawal policies that were approved by the Fiji National Provident Fund late last year came into effect from today. These changes include housing, funeral, unemployment, medical and education assistance. Savada Thambor reports. The changes to the withdrawal policy was made following several requests from the FNPF members during the Institute's annual forum. For the last um, two or three years, when we've gone about, we've... Uh, We've taken feedback and comments from our members, and when we come back to head office, we review these uh, suggestions and recommendations from members, and if we see that it's adding value to our members, we undertake the relevant changes accordingly, which is then pushed through our board, uh, who then approve the changes in the policy. Part of the changes, members can now apply for assistance to support their parents' education. The textbook eligibility for year 13 students and above has been increased to $400 and members can also withdraw $2,000 for short overseas courses. Uh, I think it's good. It's good for everybody. We'll now be, it's like before we were sick like that, we have to go to the hospitals and ask the family members. And uh, It's like FNP, we got the money. We can withdraw our money and buy our own stuff and all that. Good idea to FN, uh, benefit FNPF members and uh, for us too. Eh? The changes also include mode of payment for processing fees, allowing members to have fees directly deducted from their balances. According to Wangairawai, these changes will ensure that product offerings are relevant to meet the members' expectations given the changing economic and social conditions. Sabera Tabua, FBC News. The Fiji Roads Authority spent $17 million on the rehabilitation of roads affected by Cyclone Mick in 2009. Speaking before the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee earlier today, Chief Financial Officer Robert Sen said the emergency flood recovery project took three years to complete. Rachel Nuth reports. Roads that were rehabilitated under this project included Rakiraki and Tavua, Nandarivatu, Monasavu, Koronivia and Lokia in Rewa. The authority also stabilized the Y level and Lomoloma slips. We complete two roads, one bridge, one slip, and one bridge is not need. In MWH is cancelled that bridge. 
in the this is the 1612. This is the village in Amando village. Robert Sen told the committee the Raki Raki Bridge on Kings Road was badly affected by the floods and needed a complete facelift. The bridge currently uh, will cater for the uh, main arterial road, which is the Kings Road. Uh, currently, the normal flooding we had, the bridge has not gone under the water, and it will be difficult because. But the other areas where it's low lying, uh, that may get flooded. But um, the road has been risen, so the Kings Road. Um, crossing the Rekiriki Bridge uh, would not get flooded. The committee also questioned the effectiveness of the utilities working together. Uh, in terms of ownership, uh, who owns all this uh, infrastructure uh, placed along the road and also on the road project? We work uh, very closely uh, in terms of if we are rehabilitating a, any road, uh, we check uh, with Water Authority, uh, FEA and Telecom. The FRA also informed the committee that other rehabilitation work relating to damage caused by Tropical Cyclone Winston is underway. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Inmates who have pending cases before the courts in Lautoko or Nandi will now be kept separately from those that are serving sentences at the Lautoko Correction Center. Philippe Nakaso reports this is part of the refurbishment plans of correctional facilities around the country. More redevelopment plans were undertaken at the Lotoka Correction Center recently, with the government spending close to $300,000. Logistics uh, office and uh, logistics stores building, uh, which uh, was constructed at the cost of $120,000. And the second project is uh, the rehabilitation uh, refurbishment work to one of our old dormitories, which will now form part of a segregation block and also a transition block, and also we have a secretary cell. These works were necessary as the new block will be used for three purposes. It's for the transition of prisoners, uh, basically prisoners that come outside of the Western Division, that have court cases uh, here in the Western Division, either Lotoka and, ba, Lotoka and uh, Nandi. They will be housed at that particular transition cell. We have uh, 12 cells and also for the segregation block. Sometimes we have uh, some disciplinary issues in the correctional center uh, and we get to uh, segregate some of the prisoners in uh, these uh, cells and we also have uh, a psychiatric cell. The government has strongly stated that even though these people are behind bars for breaking the law, they still need to be treated with respect. Most people in the criminal justice system, of course, we tend to be concerned about when a particular crime may be committed. We're interested in about getting the culprits or the perpetrators, we may be concerned in the outcome, outcome of the, the court ruling, but then we tend to forget about the last element of the criminal justice system. Around 300 inmates are currently serving sentences at the Lotoka prison. Philippe Naikaso, FBC News. Ahead in sports with Jamie, believe in Jerry Tawai says Beba, but we now join Rachel for the latest in business. Thanks Jackie, good evening and coming up in business tonight. Inv investment activity remained upbeat last year. And in growing Fiji, proper gym facility for police officers. Stay with us. Bula! Bula FM, number 2 and a seri. In business tonight, the Reserve Bank of Fiji says investment activity remained upbeat throughout last year. New lendings by commercial banks for investment purposes also rose, backed by growth in 